Okay, now continuing with the cabinet making. What we have here is the main side panel for the tall cupboard. And today I'm going to put a cut out in this for the tambour door. And then I'm going to make it, make that door. And that's quite an operation in itself. So we'll get this marked out first, uh, the hole, get it cut out, and then we'll get on with making the door. Okay, so we have the hole cut in here and we have these components. This is one of the rails that the door's gonna slide up in. And this is the spiral thing, which is gonna curl around. And that wants to sit here um, against the rail or in line with the rail. But what we need to do first is make something to attach the rail and the spiral to. Um, I believe you can buy these things already made. They're like hockey sticks. It looks like a hockey stick. Thing. But what I'm going to do is attempt, I'll use some of this wood, same type I've been using for the framing, and I'll put that right the way up there. I'll attach this to it, like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll put a piece of plywood in the top here and attach that to the plywood. For the marking out of this, what we know is that there is a baton running along the inside of this cupboard in the van. So we can put a similar mark here. And we also know that this bottom line here, if you can see that, this bottom line is the baton for the shelf. Now, the shelf itself is also going to be on there so we can make a mark this area <coughs> make a mark just six mil up from that and if we draw that line we can then determine the length of this button which is going to go up the side because we want that to join the top button here and the bottom button there this will also give the front of this cabinet a lot more strength. It'll have two of these buttons on it. So I'm just going to put that there, mark here, and cut that off. So then we've got, I've marked this one out. I've done the same here, and I've put a line one centimetre in from the side of the uh, cutout, and that's where that black um, runner is going to sit. So that's going to sit there. The button will sit there. And this will be obviously the buttons attached to the uh, to the panel from the front and then the runner is attached to the button I'm assuming with a very small screw counter sunk right in so it doesn't snag the uh, the wood as it goes up so the next thing we want to do here is just measure out where where spirals are going to go and then from that we can cut the channel and we can make a piece of plywood to stick the um, the spirals to. As I say, it's a little bit unfortunate only having the, uh, the left hand one, but there we go. Now, uh, just a placement with this, we want to make sure it's not too high in the van. Uh, we don't want to hit the ceiling. And we want it to be out the way of the door itself. Um, I'm saying if I stuck another centimetre around there and put this a centimetre up, that would be fine, I think. I say I think I've never made one of these before. Um, so it's a little bit of making it up as you go along. I have a rough idea how these used to work. Uh, used to get them in household appliances like a reading bureau, you know, writing bureau. Or used to get uh, bread bins, which had this type of door on them as well. Um, so I'm familiar with them. I've seen one before. But as I say, I've never actually attempted to make one. So, always nice to try something new. Alrighty, so I'm saying what rail then is going from there and it'll go up to this mark, up to this mark here. And then behind that, we will have the spiral sitting there. So I'm gonna mark that, I'm gonna cut it with a little hacksaw and that should be good. I think if we do this setup first, you see, then we'll know exactly what the um, 
dimensions of the slats need to be. That'll be the right way to go, I think. So we've got that there, and we've got that on the mark. I found a piece of this, I think it's 12 mil ply. Uh, this will work very well. So we'll put that right up at the edge there, make a mark here, and we'll cut a piece of that ply off. In fact, I'll cut two pieces off at that length. And I mean, we could bandsaw them into a circle shape if necessary. I don't know whether it's absolutely necessary. But first cut's there. Okay, so this is our setup here. Um, the ply is going to fix there. Just make sure this is all aligned properly with the bottom before we mark this. That's good there. The button's good. Everything good. So what we're going to do with this is just put it into place. It go better that way. It goes better that way. It fits nicely that way. I'm going to mark the button where this is going to sit, which is just there. And I'm going to mark, I'm going to leave a little bit on that. I'll take this off, but I'll leave a little bit on it just so that I can put a spar across later. Now I've marked exactly where that's going on this uh, button here. And what I'm going to do is just put a couple of pilot holes through the middle of it. And then we are going to glue and screw the lug onto there. So line of glue. We know both faces are flat together and we should be able to just screw that in. Yeah. So that's going to sit there. Button at the bottom, button at the top. That's going to go up to the line and that is going to screw on there. So far so good. I'm going to do the other one the same and then we'll tackle the doors. Alright, that's both of them uh, done and that's where they're going to sit. Now, I think what we're going to have to do is take a very accurate measurement here between the insides of these runners. Um, I'll just take a look at them actually. It looks like they have a little recess for the screw head but that would mean my material would have to hit a ridge which is in there. There's a couple of ridges in there. Um, that would have to hit that and that's okay. Um, but first of all we want this measurement and then we can start cutting these uh, this way and then we'll fire the bandsaw up and we'll cut them down that way. They'll also want a little bit of work these. They'll want radi radiusing and uh, paint on the exposed surfaces. So it's not a one day job. You've got to wait for this stuff to dry obviously. Two there. I would say that's four. Four hundred and five. Four hundred and five. I'm going to make these four hundred and five long. I'm cut out. Uh, the bandsaw did just fine with them. Right. So we've got enough here to cover uh, the opening of the door and to have it already sitting in the spiral to help it round there, and a little covering at the bottom. Now, these are going to get cleaned up on the sander. Um, I'm going to make sure they're exactly parallel and if they're not I'm going to sand them so that they are. Right, so I've cleaned them up and I think they look okay like this you know I was going to paint them but I like this uh, I think the edge of it not being painted just gives it a little bit more definition so I do like that. Um, well next task with this so far as I know is to make a jig so that we get it very square when we glue it together. We want to glue all of these slats together uh, with some material down the back but they've got to be square and um, if it's not square it's not going to curl properly in there it'll be off so we need to make a jig of some description um, which will keep them square whilst gluing them so that's my next one all right so now moving right along with this I put a, a little jig on the bench which is square absolutely square I've laid these in place I've knocked them all up this way and I've squared them at the top and I'm just going to 
go around and check that. Everything is square. Now, I have a piece of this uh, ratchet strap. And I'm gonna, I've drawn a line in here as well, actually. I've drawn uh, two parallel lines. And we're going to put that on there. Like that. I'm not going to press these together too much. I'd like a little bit of air in them just to um, just to help them along if needed. I'll just measure for that. Again, we'll cut the ends of this. Out. So they're going to lie like that. And then I'll see if it needs one down the edge. Um, if it does, I can put one on. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. So this is the job. We've got some uh, epoxy resin here. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that up. Not too much. It is very quick drying stuff and this may take a little while. And I've also got somewhere my staple gun with just a little six mil staple in it. And we're going to stick one of them in each of these. See how this all works out. Okay, so as I say. That's looking good to me. That's looking pretty good. And the question is, will it roll up? I'm saying yes, that will definitely roll up. We'll just leave it like that for a moment or two, let the epoxy resin go off. As I say, I'm going to mark this line, cut it all square, and we should be good to go. It's phase one of that. Um, it's looking good. It's, I've taken the edges down to square, so everything's now in alignment with itself. The only thing that I might consider doing with it. I'll look into a couple of tutorials and see if this is the best idea. But an idea I've had is, although we have this, um, these strips and that's all good, I was thinking possibly a continuous piece of cloth would just stop it from doing this. Um, that might be an idea for the back of that. I'll look into that and if that becomes so then I'll get a piece of fabric and just put it on there and glue it right the way over and that should give it a bit more rigidity this way it, it does tend to you know it does this um i don't know what that'll be like with the runners and i might very well do that with a cloth just in case it would be very difficult to do afterwards so it's probably best done first it certainly wouldn't hurt it having looked at a couple of tutorials and um considering this a little further uh, i'm going to put this piece of material across the whole of the back of this and it will just stop it from uh, wiggling around. So first thing we want to do is cover this piece of material in glue and to do that I have some glue and I did have a spreader that's it there. Right here let's go. Pretty much covered. Couple of little dry spots there. But that should do it. Now we should take this and as if by magic. Yeah, I'm seeing that's gonna be a lot better. That'll give it a lot more stability. And hopefully make it run nice and smooth. Now just back to the door here. Um, the glue is set on the back of that, and that's much better. That really is much better. It's, it's much more stable. It's looking good, and we are almost ready to go with that. All right. Now the next thing to consider here with the door, the tambour door, is fixing the rails onto the panel itself. And I've got some very, very small 13 mil screws, a uh, very small head to attempt to do that. And I'm also going to put a little bit of epoxy on. 
So we we'll have a covering of epoxy on the uh, on the back of the rail, and we're just going to sit that rail in line on the securing batten. Having done that, we have the drill. We have, as I say, a very small bit. And we have the screws. So, let's see what that looks like. To me, that does look a little high. The screw head looks a little high. Use the drill as a countersink. <coughs> Again, a very delicate operation. But um, I'd prefer that screw head to sit a little further in the channel. But make sure we're still lined up, which we are. That's potentially better with that counter, with that little countersink. So our spiral and rail is on. Our next thing would be to screw that whole rail to the panel from the front. Okay, so I have both the rails on and I've got one of these on. One's absent. Uh, the door seems good. It's uh, a little bit stiff in places, but we'll sand that down. And I just think it's not being held properly on this side yet. So it's not a fair test really, because um, it does want that other spiral in there. Happy days. The right hand spiral arrived. Look at that. Got a right hand one, got a left hand one. That's what they call a pair. Um, now, the door itself, I've got it in there and a little bit stiff there. Might just want a little shaving here and there off the rails, but fundamentally, ah, that's okay. That's okay, that's almost at the top there. That's pretty good. Um, very pleased with that actually. So the only thing that this door wants is a handle, some sort of handle to uh, bring it up and down. So if we take it back out, we'll take a look at how we might do that. I'm seeing just another slat of wood um, connected to this one. Then that'll act as a stop at the bottom, which would be about there, that's okay. And it would act as a stop at the top and it's something to pull it up with. So I'm going to cut uh, another piece of this wood and I'll just screw it into that from the back. But I think I'll have to put the door in there first. So that's going to be the sequence. I'll cut the wood, put the door in, screw the handle on, and then at last I can get this panel on. I've been waiting a long time to put this panel in the van uh, for this thing here. And today's the day. So we've got the handle on the front there and it, the epoxy is almost set so I'm just going to put these very small screws through into there and that should keep the handle nice and firm. Yeah I think I just feel a little bit more secure with these on, with this on. That's okay, that's better. Yeah, that's better, more secure. Now, I think we've got it. <coughs> the idea is the door will hit the cross button at the bottom to keep it low like this and then the handle you can take it up and you can take it up to the handle height and it'll come back down and stop about there. So the tambour door this means that we can eventually get that back panel into the van. Um, the rest of the vans come along very nicely but this panel has been holding me up a little. But not to worry, today is the day. It's gonna go in here, it's gonna need a little bit of adjustment to get around the hatch that I've put in here. And 
it'll need a little bit of adjustment to get around these hinges. Okay, so finally having the panel in, it's time to paint it. Um, now I've masked everything up here. Got masking tape on the ceiling, on the floor, around the worktop, everywhere it needs to go. And we're going to give this a coat of paint. Um, I've got a number of brushes actually. I've got this one. I've got a very small artist's brush just to get into these uh, corner pieces. And I've got a roller for the bigger areas. So I'm going to get on with that. And we're going to paint all this same as the uh, cabinet doors. And I think that'll all look very nice when it's done. Alrighty, so we've got all this painted up. Um, still masked, still a little bit wet. I'll leave it until that dries completely. But I think at this point the cabinet making is pretty much complete. Um, got all the drawers in, got the hatches in. We've got a sliding door, doors on the back. And as I say, this is all lightweight. This is um, cabinet frame built, as we've seen, as we've gone through this, with a very thin MDF cover. Um, it's very sturdy, very sturdy way to make the cabinets. And uh, I think this is all looking very good, actually. Now this means we're getting fairly close to completion with this van. Um, the next thing to do, which I'm going to get someone to help me do, is put the rock and roll bed in. Once the bed's in, we can then start to make the panels for it, the wood panels, and then do the upholstery. Still a decision to be made on what sort of upholstery. I've sent for some samples and um, we'll take a look at them and see which one is the best. But for now, there's a few little jobs, few little fiddly jobs to do that haven't been done earlier. Um, this here, for instance, still needs taken care of. I think I'll carpet that. Um, I was going to put some of the laminate floor in, upstanding, but I think that will interfere with the, uh, with the battery box door. So instead, we'll put a bit of carpet along there. And there's just a few other little bits and pieces, like this on the door probably carpet over this just for the sake of it and then we'll do a bit of cleaning up and we'll see how it looks next we will get the rock and roll bed in and I'll show you how I'm going to um, make the boards for that and then I'll order the form we'll make the upholstery and the van at that point will be almost done and then we'll have a van tour I think we'll go out to the woods go out to the woods somewhere get the awning up and uh, have a good old van tour Okay, so that's how I made the tambour door. It's looking good in the van, all good. In the next video, uh, we are gonna be putting the rock and roll bed in and we've got a table to put in as well in the van and then we're pretty much there with that. If you've enjoyed the series so far, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel and if you've liked this video, do give it a thumbs up. Following this series, um, there will be another van, another build, and it'll be a completely different layout to this one. So that's coming up soon. Thanks very much for watching.